Hey everyone, I'm Boone. Today I'm going to show you how to use Adobe Premiere Pro. Now this tutorial is really targeted at you new users, people who have never opened the program before. Now I'm going to teach you how to create a new project, import your assets, do a basic edit, and even export and upload to popular platforms. And I'm going to do all of this in less than 15 minutes, hopefully. Now if you'd like to follow along with me as I do the tutorial, you can download all of these video files in the link in the video description. So Adobe Premiere Pro's interface is made up of panels. Now you can customize the look of the interface by clicking and moving these panels around. Now depending on the version of Premiere that you're using, your interface might look slightly different from mine. If you want to use a default workspace, simply go to Window, Workspaces, and then you can select any of the defaults here. To customize your own workspace, simply Save as New Workspace. You can also toggle the visibility of panels here. So to close some panels, I can right click right over the name, and select close panel. And then for the source panel, I'm gonna simply click and drag that over here to the right of my project panel, put that in the middle, and then to resize these, I can click right on the edge and move these around. And as you can see, this blue highlighted area shows me which panel is selected. Now I'm gonna grab this, I'm gonna close that, and now I'm gonna to go to Window, Workspaces, Save as New Workspace, and I'm gonna call it Boone. And now when I go to Window Workspaces, you can see I have Boone here. And there's even a keyboard shortcut here to access it. Now if I look over here, this is my project panel. This is kind of the heart of my project. This is where all of my elements and assets are going to live. Now I don't have anything in here at the moment, so I need to bring something in. Now I could go to File Import, but a much faster way is to simply double click within my project panel. And if you look right here, it says Import Media to Start. So I'm going to double click. And now I'm going to navigate to the folder where my video is, and I'm going to simply grab all these clips. And once again, these are all available for download as exercise files. Simply follow the link in the video description. Now I'm going to click Import. Now I like to keep things organized. So you can go down here and you see there's a little bin button. So I'm going to hit that, and I'm going to rename that video. And then I'm going to go, I can grab all these, and I can move them inside here. Now. With the project panel, you can click a couple of different things down here. I can view these assets in different ways. So just be aware of this. You can change the size of these. And there's also a new item button. If I click this, there's a number of different things that I can create here. I can create a new sequence, um, an adjustment layer, bars and tone, black video, or a color mat. Now just to the right of the project panel, I have the source monitor, and this does exactly what it sounds like. It allows you to monitor your source material. Now to check out a video in the source monitor, simply double click one of your clips or drag and drop. I could also just drag and drop it and that will load it as well. Now the source monitor has a number of playback controls which are all customizable via this button editor. Now the purpose of this is so you can monitor your source material and then you can add in and out points and prepare it for placement in your edited sequence. So now if I play back here. Go ahead and give me a quick introduction. My name is Derek Gores. I live in Melbourne, Florida. We can see our playhead here. We also have our time code. If I want to view just the audio, I can click this little audio symbol and that's going to show us the audio here. I can also shuttle around my playhead by dragging it around. So now let's add an endpoint. To add an endpoint, I'll hit the I key. And for out point, I'll hit the O key. So we can add an out point here. And you can see it reflected down here in this little mini timeline. I can also move this around like this. And we can go back and see the video. And I can click and drag these edges. All right, now I'm ready to put this clip inside of a sequence. Just beneath here, I can see my timeline panel. It says no sequences. But just below that, it says drop media here to create sequence. So all I need to do now is click on my clip in the source monitor and drag it down here and then release. And that's going to automatically create this new sequence. And we can see the clip here. At the top, we have our video tracks. And at the bottom, we have our audio tracks. And there's a number of different tools here. And we also see another monitor popped up here. This is our program monitor. And this essentially reflects what's on our timeline. So if I click and I drag, we can see that this moves here on the program monitor. Also, if I click and drag in the program monitor, you can see that it also moves my playhead on the timeline here. Also, we now have a sequence created here. It says artist interview. And once again, to stay organized, I'm going to create a new bin, call it sequences, and then I'm going to grab that sequence and drop it in there. So to really get comfortable using Adobe Premiere Pro, you're going to want to learn a few basic keyboard shortcuts. These are really going to help you navigate the timeline. So I'm going to select the timeline panel, 
Now spacebar will play back and stop. In grocery lists, photos, menus. The J, K, and L keys will also help you shuttle. J will shuttle left. K will stop and L will shuttle right. Photos, menus. And if you press these numerous times, it'll go faster and slower. So I'm going to press J numerous times. And then if I press L several times. Then you have the plus and minus keys. Plus will zoom in and then minus will zoom out. And then if you hit the backslash key, that's going to automatically fit everything in view. That's probably my favorite shortcut of all time. All right, now let's get into some basic editing here. First, I'm going to go down on my clip. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to label and change the color so we can kind of see what's going on. And then I'm going to move my playhead to the middle. Now, in addition to adding in and out points in the source monitor, I can also just click and drag and drop directly over the program monitor. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to load a new clip here inside of my source monitor. And now if I click and drag, and hold over the program monitor, we're gonna see a couple of different options here, including replace, overwrite, insert, and overlay edits. Now I can also drag this directly in the sequence, and to perform some of those same edits, I can hit command keys, such as uh, command or control, shift, alt. You can see it gives us different things, like this is a replace edit. So now if I just hold command or control, it's gonna do an insert. Now if I hit backslash, you can see that that automatically inserted it, cut this clip in half and moved it. Now that's not the only way you have to work. For instance, I don't really use the source monitor at all. Let me show you another way. I can go ahead and close this panel. That's gonna give me more real estate for my program monitor here. You can bring clips in directly from the project panel and drop them into your timeline, which is often how I like to work. And holding some of those modifier keys will give you the same option. You can do inserts, replacements, whatever you want. All right, now let's perform a quick and basic edit. So I'm going to delete all the clips here, and I'm going to bring this interview clip back in, hit the backslash key. Now I want to edit based on the sound bites, so I'm going to double click here to expand my audio track so I can really see what's going on. And I'm going to just reposition it like this, and now I can see these nice waveforms here. So let's have a look. My name is Derek Gores, I live in Melbourne, Florida. I'm a collage artist, I rip up stuff. Okay. Whatever I can get my hands on, you know, recycling stuff. Okay, so let's say we just want these two little sound bites to uh, make a new piece out of it. And we want to end it right there. So we want to cut out everything in the middle here. So the first thing we can do is with a clip on the timeline, one way to trim it is to just simply mouse over the edge and then I can grab and trim. So you can see I can trim there and it's given me a preview of my, of, you know, the in and out points there. So I want to trim it right to the edge here and then I'm going to click and drag that back. Now I'm going to go over and grab a tool. So over here we can see our tools panel. If you can't see it, go to Window Tools. And I'm going to grab the Razor tool. Right now we have the Selection tool. So you can see the Razor is Shortcut Key C. Now there are a ton of other tools here, but we'll save those for a more advanced tutorial. But for the basics, you definitely want to know how to use the Razor tool. So now I'm going to come back here. Rip up stuff. We want to cut it right there. And we go back to the selection tool. Now we simply drag this over to the end. We can see it based on our waveforms there. And now I could click and drag this back or I can just select the empty space here and press delete and that's gonna close that gap, automatically ripple everything back. Now I'm gonna hit backslash again. Okay, so now we have this base. Now I'm gonna throw a couple of clips on top of it. So I'm gonna zoom out and we wanna gra grab a clip of a close-up of an artist's face and you can see I can put it on the track above. So let's go ahead and do that. And now I don't want the audio. I don't want this natural sound. So to get rid of that, you can see when I select a clip, these, the audio and the video are linked. So I don't want to grab both of them. So I'm going to hold the Alt key, which is going to allow me just to grab the audio. And then I'm going to delete that. And then I'm going to find a spot that I like right here. I'm going to trim that very fast. Trim that back. And now let's simply drag that over and maybe put it right here. And now I'm gonna grab one more clip here and that is this uh, close up of hands. And once again, I'm gonna quickly delete the audio clip there. If I had that in the source panel, I could just drag over the, the video aspect individually. Okay, I'm gonna trim this down. And now real quickly, I'm gonna put it up at the end here, and I want to cover up the entire interview clip. So I'm going to hit backslash to zoom in again. So it goes from his interview head and shoulder shot to a close-up of his face. 
And you know what, I could, uh, let's say I wanna swap these, I wanna have this shot first. So what I could do is I could do a really quick, uh, this is kind of an advanced edit, but I'm gonna drag this, and then I'm gonna hold the Command key, which is Insert, but then I'm also gonna hold the Alt key, and now you see that new little symbol, that's basically just gonna do like a quick little whoop de woo switcheroo, <laughs> I don't remember the name of it, but it's flipping that around, and now, that basically didn't insert and move and like shuffle all these clips forward, so. Now we have these two clips, this first, this second, and this third. All right, so let's say that this rough cut is just fine. These are all the video clips you wanna use. So now let's focus on the audio. So this audio seemed a little bit low. Now to monitor the audio, well first I'm gonna open up my track again so I can see the waveforms, but then I'm gonna open up my audio meters, just go to window audio meters. You can see them right here. And now when I play this back, my name is Derek Gores. I live in Melbourne, Florida. You can see right here, it's going up to about negative 12, but let's say we want it up higher, like negative six or negative five. So I can select both of my audio clips here, and then I'll go to clip, audio options, and then I can select audio gain, and that's gonna bring up this dialog box. Now, I can set, uh, you know, adjust the gain manually, but I'm gonna go ahead and click normalize max peaks, and I'm gonna set that to negative five. And it's already telling us our peak amplitude right here. It's peaking out at negative 12. So I'm gonna hit okay. And now we can see that the waveforms kind of grew a little bit bigger. Now we're gonna have a nice louder sound. My name is Derek Gores. I live in Melbourne, Florida. I'm a collage artist. I rip up stuff, whatever I can get my hands on, you know, recycling stuff to uh, make a new piece out of it. Okay, now the levels are good, but I wanna make it extra nice by adding some transitions because there's an audible change. It's really noticeable between here. Whatever. You can hear the difference in the natural sound changing. So I'm gonna select these clips, go to sequence and select apply audio transition. That's gonna apply an audio transition. And now I can grab these and kind of retime them, get them a little bit shorter. Now for video transitions, I can go to window and select the effects panel and there's a video transitions folder here. You can do this the same way with audio transitions. Now I'm gonna open up dissolve and you'll see cross dissolve here. I can simply click and drag here. It's just another way to add transitions. So now that'll fade up from black. So now watch what we've got here and listen to the audio as well. My name is Derek Gores. I live in Melbourne, Florida. Okay, and it'll fade out the audio here. Out of it. Now I need some music. So I'm gonna go grab this audio from my buddy Noah T. I'm gonna drag this into my project. And now I'm gonna reposition this here and I'm just gonna drag this music clip down at the track below. And it's quite long. So let's just, we wanna take it right in the middle here. So we can trim this way down and then zoom back in. Now let's take a listen. I know it's gonna be way, way, way too loud, I'm sure. In Melbourne, Florida. I'm a collage artist, I rip up stuff. Okay, now to bring this down, I could go to the audio gain, but I'm gonna show you a different way. I'm gonna go to Window, Audio Track Mixer. Now this allows us to control the levels of each individual track. Whatever I can get my hands on, you know. So we can see here Audio Track 2, which I could rename by the way. Recycling stuff. is quite loud, so I'm just gonna bring that down. To uh, make a new piece out of it. Okay, that's looking good. Now I'm gonna grab that clip and hit Command Shift D and that'll automatically add my audio transitions. Now to add text, I'm gonna go grab the text tool and I just want his name to come up, Gores. Okay, now how can we style this? Well, if I go to Window Essential Graphics, now that's gonna show us this Essential Graphics panel with all of our text tools. So really quickly here, I'm gonna grab this, I'm gonna make it full caps, make it bold, and then center it up and make it ginormous. Let's make it like 600. And center that up here with these align tools. Now this can just pop in, um, or if we wanna have it up the whole time, you know, whatever. All right, now my piece is finished. So I'm gonna go to File, Export, Media, 
And once the export settings dialog box is open, don't worry too much about all of your settings, just make sure you pick the right format. H.264 is kind of the industry standard for a lot of platforms, like social media platforms. Then they have the preset section here. Now this will allow you to automatically select something, like say we're exporting for Twitter, we can hit this Twitter preset and that's going to automatically set up all of our video settings. Now to upload this video to Twitter, I'll go to the publish tab and there's a Twitter section here. If I click this button and then log into my Twitter account, it's going to automatically upload it just after it exports. Now I just need to name the file, give it a location, and hit export. My name is Derek Gores. I live in Melbourne, Florida. I'm a collage artist. I rip up stuff, whatever I can get my hands on, you know, recycling stuff to uh, make a new piece out of it. Okay, so there you have it. That's Adobe Premiere Pro, a super fun program. So if you enjoyed my tutorial, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. Also, to learn more about video editing and filmmaking, head over to nofilmschool.com.